Hey, as the time of this recording, I finished my storyboarding class SB1 at Bernstein Burbank a week ago. This time, it's actually been around a week, not three like last time. I really, really, really enjoyed this class, and it was a good in depth rundown on the basics of storyboarding. I learned so much in this class, and it let me get a good look at what I was doing wrong and what I could do better in my storyboarding skills. Before I actually booked the class, I wondered if I could jump into SB2, and I was about to, but then I remembered what happened with DCVA1 with Dom's class and how I kind of crashed and burned. So I decided it would be better to go to SB1, <laughs> and I'm really glad I did. Um, if you're considering skipping to SB2, I recommend doing SB1 just in case you've missed any of the basics and you're self-taught. It was really fun! We got to break down scenes from movies like Pirates of the Caribbean and The Incredibles and one of my favorites, How to Train Your Dragon. It really gave me an insight on the mind of movie and show creators and directors. I was introduced to a ton of different directors that I hadn't really paid attention to before, like Wes Anderson and Steven Spielberg. I know a lot of people will gasp at that, but I never really paid attention to directors before this class. But now I'm obsessed with Wes Anderson's way of movie storytelling. It's really fascinating and it gives me that feeling that the book series, uh, 13 series of unfortunate events gave me as a kid. It's a slightly unsettling feeling and a little bit nostalgic. I'm not sure how else to explain it, but if you know, you know. For the first few weeks of class, we did movie scene breakdowns, and our teacher Alan Zhang taught us how to analyze sequences and observe things like perspective, composition, and acting. After that, we got to storyboard a script from The Simpsons. Mine honestly didn't turn out so well, but I learned that even flat shows like The Simpsons or Spongebob or Rick and Morty still make use of perspective. You always want to lead the eye to something. I definitely have a greater appreciation for how much effort cinematographers and directors put into their movies and shows and now I'm on a mission to analyze and break down as many as I can. Right now, I'm trying to break down season 2 of Bridgerton because I really admire the cinematography in that show and it's just a really good show and I recommend people to watch season 2, uh, maybe not season 1, <laughs> but yeah. After that, Alan taught us the basics of storytelling. I was kind of shocked to learn that there are shows where storyboarders are practically the show writers, which was really fascinating to me because I love writing in my free time. Although in shows like that, I've heard storyboarders are often overworked and underpaid, which is why there is a new negotiation happening with the guild and studios across the US. By the time this video is out, I don't know if the negotiations will be finished or not, but I hope things go well for them. <laughs> There's way more story techniques in storytelling than I thought initially, and I realized the one I most commonly use is Sid Field's Paradigm. So with Sid Field's Paradigm, there's Act 1, 2, and 3, so you have your basic story structure, but in Act 1, you have the inciting incident, plot point 1, and then the pinch point. And then in Act 2, we have the midpoint and pinch point and plot point 2. And then finally in Act 3, you have the climax. If you want to get more into this type of storytelling, I recommend going to check out Abby Emmons' YouTube channel where she goes in depth about this type of story structure. And... She also goes really in-depth with internal conflict. For some dumb reason, I thought it'd be a good idea to start my other storyboard animatic for The Cruel Prince at the same time I was taking this class, which in the end, I used to procrastinate on my classwork. I need more self-control. 
Anyways, each week that we were working on our own storyboards, we got critique on our story characters, thumbnails, beat boards, and rough passes. And let me tell you, Alan does not half-ass his critiques. His critiques are extremely thorough, and we'd go over class time to look at each and everyone's work. Of course, we could bounce if we needed to, and if he didn't get to us in person, he'd take time out of his busy schedule to email us our critiques, which I really, really appreciated. He also gave us plenty of advice on how to get past recruiter AIs, which was really interesting and helpful, and gave each person individual advice on what to do after the class was over. For me, he recommended to continue doing gesture studies and analyze more movies and TV shows. This class really opened my eyes to the art of cinematic storytelling and I feel like I have unlocked the secrets to the way big studios like Disney and Pixar and DreamWorks well I guess they're all under Disney and mm, there's some controversy right now but you know the old classic Pixar, Disney, and DreamWorks stories do theirs I recommend taking this class if you really want to know the general basics of story structure and storyboarding it's basically a quick rundown on everything you need to know the lessons that alan taught us were really priceless and i know it's going to take me really really far hello it's me from editing um i realized while i was editing that i didn't really talk about alan that much in the video um here is his instagram and his twitter um he is a storyboard artist for many studios, including Leica, Netflix, and one of my favorites, Tonko House. I kind of forgot to ask him about <laughs> working at Tonko House because I'm an idiot. Uh, usually when someone asks like, oh, do you have any questions? I have a hard time thinking of questions on the spot. Oh, I should have asked him, <laughs> but I missed the opportunity. Uh, it would be so cool to work for them one day. I really admire their work. Um, but yeah, I think Alan is working at Nickelodeon right now on a show as a storyboarder. Um, and he does really funny comics on his Instagram. So go check him out and look out for his next class. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I hope it helps you guys decide whether or not to take this class. I think the next SB1 course isn't taught by Alan Jing, it's taught by two other artists. I'll put them on the screen. I can't remember their names, but I'm sure they also go over similar things. The next classes I'll be taking is the flash course of storyboarding by... Oh, I forgot her name too, but there's this artist who's who's doing it and she's worked for Disney and Pixar and I think she was on Raya and the Last Dragon, I'm not sure. But I will put that on the screen, so I'm going to take that and then I'm going to take SB2 and we'll see how it goes. I hope it goes well. Um, definitely have learned from this class that I shouldn't procrastinate because I did not finish my piece. But I also discovered that in your portfolio, you can also put musical storyboards, which I am definitely going to be putting in my portfolio. Because if you think about it, a lot of shows and movies are actually musicals, especially if they especially if the demographic is a younger audience um yeah so tell me if you guys have any questions in the comments i'll be happy to answer as best as i can um and i hope you guys have a fantastic day subscribe and like and i will see you in the next video Bye bye